Hello all, my name is Tyler. And I'm John. And together we are DeLon Rigging Solutions, or DRS for short. All right, so let's talk for a few minutes about uh, marking the floor. Uh, for a road show coming in, they typically the show rigger or the show flyman, uh, maybe the show head carpenter, whoever's in charge of it on that particular show, is going to mark the floor to show where they need chain hoist points installed at. They're going to measure and mark a location, and then either they or the house rigger will go around and mark what wire rope is needed to, made it, to be made up in order to hang those chain hoists and have them end up in the correct place. There's not an industry-wide standard for the way those are marked or labeled, but there are some pretty common practices, and we'll, we'll try to cover those common practices and uh, then you have to work out the details with whoever is marking the floor on any given day to make sure that you know what it is they intend. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's real common to have more than one kind of hoist on a show. You may have half ton hoist, one ton hoist, two ton hoist, two speed hoist or variable speed hoist and Usually the easiest thing to do is to use a different shape for each type of hoist. Uh, another circumstance might be that you have all one-ton hoist, but you have one power distribution type for audio hoist and another distribution type for lighting hoist. So there can be a lot of reasons for using different symbols. Typically, I just use your basic circle for a one-ton chain hoist. <clears throat> I may label it one ton if I have a show that's really confusing and has just lots of things to, to pick from. So if for this one ton hoist, let's say that this is a, a dead hang, that it's directly under a piece of structural steel where I can attach it to the grid or the, to the ceiling structure. So if it's a, a, a dead hang, what we call a dead hang, then I'm going to mark how much chain I need or how much cable I need to get from the, I need to consider the height of the grid, the length of the chain, and how much additional cable it takes to get to the structural steel. So if I have a 60 foot chain and uh, an 80 foot grid, then I need at least a 20 foot down hang. So if I, if I put a 20 foot down hang on it, then that's going to get me the entire chain in the air, which typically we try to get almost all the chain up. To attach it to the structure, I want to use what's called a five basket. So I'm going to mark that like that, the 20 foot down hang and the five foot basket. So the down hang, and this, this isn't, you wouldn't see this in marking the floor, but just for demonstration purposes, the 20 foot down hang and the basket is a cable that wraps the structural steel and attaches to the down hang. We'll cover that later. But for right now, 20 foot down, 5 foot basket. Another way to write that would be 20 plus a 5, or 20 plus a 5 basket. Those two are the, I'm going to say those are the most common ways to label the wire rope that's required for this point. Another uh, marking might be to use a triangle to mark the point. I myself typically use a triangle for a half ton hoist. In this case we're going to say that this half ton hoist is right in between where there are structural attachments for it. So, meaning that if we've got a structural beam over here, and a structural beam over here, and our point is in the middle, in between those two structural beams. So we have to build a bridle to, to make the hoist hang in the right place. A common way to mark a bridle would be to, cut, to draw a bridle, 
And then on one leg, let's say on this side of the bridle, we have a 15 foot leg and a five foot basket. And then on the other side of the leg, let's say that we have a 10 foot leg and we're gonna use what's called some deck chain. And I'm gonna say we're gonna use three links of the deck chain. And over here has a great big beam that we have to wrap where a five footer won't go around it. So this side is gonna have a 10 foot basket. Additionally, let's say we still have our 80 foot ceiling and we still have a 60 foot chain. So 60 plus 15 is only 75 feet. So even if this were plumb and it was straight down, that wouldn't be enough cable to reach the ceiling and get the, to get the, all the, you would pick, have to pick the motor up off the floor to, to hang that bridle. So we're gonna add here, we're gonna add a 10 foot down hang at the bottom of the bridle. That way we've got 10, 25 feet, minus just a little bit, plus a 60 foot chain would be 85, so we should have four or five feet of chain laying on the floor after we hang this point. The other thing that we can do, another method, would be to draw the bridle again, to mark the down hang that way. But over here we would put 15 plus a five basket. And over here we would put 10 plus three links with a 10 basket. And that would be the exact same configuration, just written another way. Another shape that I often use will be a square. And personally, I usually use a square for a two-ton hoist. I might, additional here, go ahead and mark it as two-ton, just to help reinforce that, that this is a, a, a different shape, a different purpose, a different type of hoist that we're hanging here. In this case, with a two-ton hoist, that means that we're going to use half-inch wire to make up the, the bridle, to, or to make up the wire for it. We're not going to do a bridle. I'm going to say that this is a dead hang again, but um, we're going to use a different kind of a basket on this. I'm going to say that this is a, a 20 foot down and a 15 foot split basket. And if we were going to write that by the other, by the other uh, method, that would be 20 plus a 15 split basket. And what I mean by a split basket, let's look at that a little bit. We'll, we'll look at it uh, when we're building wire and show you then. But let me just draw it briefly. If we have a 20 foot down, and we have a shackle here, at that shackle we'd have a 10 foot cable, and we'd have a 5 foot cable. We're going to tie it on to the five foot cable so when it gets up to the beam, that 10 foot cable can wrap around and make the connection at the five. There's a lot of different reasons for using a 15 split basket, but most often it's because a five footer won't go around the beam. And if you do a 10 footer, then that means that your shackles and your connection are five feet below you. If you use a split basket, then the connection point ends up only two feet below you or two and a half feet below you and is much easier to reach. Easier is good, but most often easier is also safer, which would be a reason for doing a split basket. Please remember that DeLaw and Rigging Solutions one-shot train videos are meant as general overviews. Every system is different. Every venue has different procedures. All statements made make certain assumptions about systems and venue similarities. Nothing can replace on-site training with a qualified individual. If ever you have a question or concern about rigging, do not hesitate to reach out to us or another qualified vendor in your area.